Hello and welcome to our live stream video today. I'm Andrew Jap. I'm the Global Business Manager for Kinetics Drives and Cable Solutions. And the topic for today is modernization of servo drives and how the Kinetics 5000 family can be a great fit. Joining me today is my esteemed colleague, Kevin Hulk, Motion Business Manager in North America. Thanks for joining me, Kevin. Good afternoon, Andy. Thanks for the invitation to chat today. Listen, we both know these are dynamic times, but what are the latest market factors that you are seeing around leading manufacturers and how they're wanting to upgrade their servo drive solutions? Wow, that's a really great question, Andy. So, you know, let me just kind of start with the the rapid changes that we're seeing in consumer behavior, really, and, and how they impact the, the needs and requirements from machine builders and manufacturers, because it's really the driving force behind a lot of this. So today's consumer really is expecting a much more customized experience, right? Some would, would say it's the SKU of YOU or the order of me, right? This is, I want mine separate and special than everybody else. So these new products, right, they're, they're coming faster and they're much shorter lived, which is another challenge in and of itself. But this creates, you know, much shorter production runs and requires much higher changeovers. So these have real impacts on productivity. And that's really the, the, the underlying trend of all this. The way it manifests itself is, is in, in, in OEMs and in manufacturers is a little bit different. So these challenges for OEMs provide opportunities, right, for the machine builders to create a much more flexible machine that can optimize an OEE by reducing that change over time, for example. We're seeing this as a real differentiator for OEMs as they focus on their customer's real problem, which really is productivity. For our end users and manufacturers, they're looking to reduce the risk of their obsolete or legacy installed base, which could have a severe impact negatively on their productivity with just one extended unplanned downtime event. At the very same time though, they're also looking to optimize really on their investment of modernization by increasing the flexibility of the machine, making it more sustainable and eliminating energy sources like oil or compressed air and adding functional safety. Yeah, that, man, those are a lot of, those are some big topics right there. As we think about many of those trends, manufacturing flexibility is at the core. It's a high priority for most manufacturers today. That speed to adapt to the changing demand is critical to their success. You know, Rockwell Automation provides a diverse portfolio of scalable solutions, right? But, you know, what we continue to see is increasing number of axes per machine. As you said, some of those more traditional control, whether they're air or, or just traditional start-stop control, moving to more coordinated motion, historically manual processes now becoming automated uh, through setup axes and others. This is, it's, it's really changing, right? How, what else have you seen? So there's a lot going on as far as the, the requirements. We're seeing, you know, the, the really big trend in a lot of different industries. But let's just take packaging, for example, where, you know, the pitch centers of the products are changing because of the requirement of this SKU or the, this part number of me, right? So on that very same machine, they have to produce package size, package width, what's what's contained in it, in, whether I want a left tennis shoe that's blue and a right tennis shoe that's red, or whether I want, you know, a selection of, uh, you see the meals at uh, at manufacturers where you get, you know, maybe a one hard boiled egg or two pieces of toast and and four pieces of cheese. Every one of those is customizable to the to the order entry from that individual. So we're seeing a lot of dynamic change to create machines with a variety of axes that can add value at various parts of that production line based on the input from the consumer. Yeah, so flexible manufacturing is more, it's about adapting to change, but it's also getting the most out of that asset, right? And, you know, really that that leads us to driving the need for consistent data, right? Data that helps manufacturers add context and texture that can help them make good decisions. Example is something like virtual torque sensor, which is an analytic available in the Kinetics 5300 and 5700. And you combine that virtual torque sensor capability with logic AOIs, and now we have an easy to commission, simple condition monitoring solution for things like shaft alignment or tension control. Have you seen other ways in which users can get productivity out of that data? Absolutely, right? So a really great example is leveraging the analytics that are 
in the integrated safety portfolio that we offer from Rockwell in our controllers and inside of our motion products, right? So there's a lot of information around in the safety envelope that can be provided to increase productivity. Examples, you know, that you might consider is just if you're setting up expectations of a of an e-stop that you understand, you know, that if, if you exceed those expectations, there's there's a situation there where you can determine whether is that a machine issue or is that something that an operator training is required because you're hitting the e-stops much more than you ever anticipated. So simply setting up something like that with a red, yellow, green uh, as far as the number of occurrences to understand it can point you in the right direction for higher productivity. Another classic example is with the Kinetics 5700 platform is the advanced functional safety features that we have. And here's a great example, like if you have a multi-axis machine that you mentioned earlier, maybe they're coordinated, maybe it's on a multiple lines as far as productivity. But in the past, if an operator hit an e-stop, it was a good chance that the whole line came down because they, they weren't leveraging a risk assessment to understand where the, the actual uh, hazard occurs. And if they could operate at a safe level of speed or a safe speed and, and actually continue to produce at a much lower speed but still produce product and make the adjustments for product production that's required. So here's a classic example of increasing OEE by slowing to a safe speed but not stopping production. I, you know, it's it's. I'm sure that's just one of so many that you run into, Kevin. Um, what would be great is, you know, if we could share that domain expertise with everyone. So if you want to learn more, smash that link in the post to get more information. Reach out to your local Rockwell Automation distributor or Rockwell Automation sales office or follow us on rockwellautomation.com. I thank you all for watching. Please feel free to share those thoughts in the comments of this live stream. And thank you, Kevin Hope, for a great conversation today. Thank you, Andy. Good chat.